back to the CIA. Everywhere around the world, toys generally make kids happy except when the CIA gets involved. According to the Washington Post, the spy agency concocted a plan in 2005 to develop Osama bin Laden demon dolls aimed at scaring children and their parents. So we all know the CIA are about as trustworthy as Harvey Weinstein is with your favorite potted plant. I mean, having a workplace so secret with no kind of oversight, no one to answer to, it's gotta lead to some pretty crazy ideas getting thrown around. And nothing is a better example of this than Operation Devil Eyes. The CIA teamed up with a former Hasbro executive who was the godfather of G.I. Joe toys to design a Bin Laden action figure whose face was painted with a special material that when heated would peel off to reveal a demon-like face. Honestly, it looks like a Darth Maul toy from the swap meet, but the CIA does dumb shit like this all the time. How about when the CIA shot a fake sex tape starring the president of Indonesia? Or how about when the CIA tried to fake the second coming of Jesus Christ? If you haven't heard of these, I'm gonna dive into all of them and more in this video. Because obviously we know the CIA has had its hand in a lot of shady cookie jars and been caught doing some messed up stuff that rhymes with torture. Now, these actions are absolutely horrible and they're well documented. But what I wanted to dive deep on today were some of the more insane and wacky ideas that the CIA has attempted to carry out to really highlight some of the guys who put the intelligence in Central Intelligence Agency. Sometimes it can be tricky to put a face to the CIA, but lucky for us, the CIA has actually been active this last year on their YouTube account. Ah yes, everyone's favorite YouTuber, the CIA. Can't wait for Mr. CIA Burger. They have a YouTube series called Behind the Artifact where they brag about mostly failed CIA projects. Take for instance the height of cutting edge spy gadgets, this dead rat. No one would ever want to pick up a dead rat. And so our officers in the Office of Technical Services thought this would be a great way to conceal things. They treated the rat, they cut it open, and created a cavity. And this way our officers could put things like money or one-time pads, um, even film inside here, sew it up, place it at the dead drop location, and then the asset could come and pick it up. But as incredible of an idea as this was, there was unfortunately a bit of a hang-up. During the testing phase, cats started stealing our rats. Yep, the CIA is just being foiled by stray cats. Our officers actually tried animal deterrents, things like cayenne pepper and Tabasco sauce, and settled on something called wormwood oil. They would have our officers douse the rat with the wormwood oil before placing it in the dead drop location. Truly, is there a better metaphor for the CIA than a dead, oily rat stuffed with money? And here's an even worse CIA spy gadget. I had to dig pretty deep for this one. What I have in my hand is a CIA-issued rectal toolkit. So the materials that rectal toolkits are made of varies to a degree, but you want to make sure that you have a material that does not have the chance of having kind of sharp edges or any kind of splintering effect. Yeah, I mean, I never leave the house without mine in. It's a dildo. Now how about this video that starts with, This is no ordinary dragonfly. Yeah, dude, how stupid would this video be if she was like, this is just an ordinary dragonfly. It got its spy wings in the 1970s after the CIA's Office of Research and Development created Insectothopter. Wait, this thing is called what? This dragonfly was intended to be a listening device. It had a small engine that would make its wings flap up and down, and it was directed and guided by a bimetallic strip on the back and a laser beam. Uh, okay, so I can't imagine how much money this costs to develop, but uh, do they actually use this thing? The CIA Dragonfly ultimately proved not to be operational because in crosswinds over five miles an hour, it just was taken off of its trajectory. Guys, the CIA is being thwarted by wind and cats just at every turn. I mean, their whole YouTube is full of these weird propaganda videos. This is from a series called Humans of the CIA. I'm a woman of color. I am a mom. I am a cisgender millennial who's been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. Why does it feel like she's gonna waterboard me with an I'm with her shirt? Intoxicate people with my effort, my brilliance. I am proud of me, full stop. My parents left everything they knew and loved to expose me to opportunities they never had. Yes, try to convince me you're a diverse workplace while you have a literal endless hallway of framed pictures of old white dudes. 
Look, this woman is clearly smart and probably a good person, but the CIA wants you to think that this is the face of them. Yet a staggering 73% of the CIA are white, with 75 being male. So this is just more corporate propaganda being used by the CIA, and badly at that. You know, I guess since most of the CIA are boomers, they really don't know how to run a YouTube channel. Which doesn't make sense, because they for sure run Ellen DeGeneres' page, and she's got like 40 million. This video, which is just a promo for their website with a stock template has such dramatic music. This is so intense. You could put this music on a Ford commercial with no changes. Now, this video is super weird. It feels like it was almost written by a propaganda AI and they refuse to ever show this girl's face, which is haunting. Like so many in this profession, I can almost draw a straight line to the attacks on September 11th. I'm a military brat and my dad was posted at the Pentagon during the attack. I vividly remember my mom doing her best to distract my sisters and I as we waited to hear if my dad was still alive. And a lot of these recruitment videos really focus on 9-11. I, I guess that's the right age bracket that they're trying to, to, to go after, is kids that grew up in the shadow of 9-11. They even have a weird monument for it built at their headquarters. The tragedy of 9-11 made me realize that our way of life is fragile and that we need to actively protect the values that we cherish. CIA certainly needs operations officers who are good at making friends and analysts who can articulate the agency's assessments we also need foreign language experts who understand the nuances of regional dialects. Computer scientists who know Python. All the other ones are so colorful, then they're just like, we are going to need some dudes who just know Python. In this video, a former agent explains that they were able to sort of blackmail this other guy into working for them, and then he made a certain request. He required that we give him a poison pen when he got back to Moscow, so that in the event he was arrested and faced torture, he could commit suicide. This decision was made at the highest part of our government. Yo, did this old lady just say that the president is signing off on poison spy pens? And all the videos on their page that do have any views look like it was probably just from buying ads on YouTube, because the video comments are all disabled and they have thousands upon thousands of downvotes. Yeah, I'm not sure if recruiting through YouTube is, is working great for you guys. Now, I'd personally never want to work at the CIA, because I don't want to work anywhere that has to send out something called the torture memo. But I do wonder what the writer's room, so to speak, at the CIA is like. Take, for example, when the CIA got into the porn business. Business. In the 1950s, the CIA launched a plan to shoot a porno with an actor made up to look like Indonesian president Sukarno. In fact, the CIA and the KGB both tried to blackmail Sukarno with a sex tape. In 1945, Sukarno became Indonesia's first president after leading a movement against the Dutch colonizers, and was widely regarded as a national hero. But above all else, Sukarno was known for being horny on May. You nasty. See, Indonesia was not only a key strategic position in the Cold War, but it was also home to the largest communist party outside of the Soviet Union. Sukarno, while not a communist himself, had communist allies, was open and shared some of the communist ideology, which obviously made him a target for our knuckleheads in Langley. But like I said, he was also a target for the KGB, who were all about trying to blackmail Sukarno by sending, quote, a batch of glamorous young women posing as air hostesses to his hotel room. However, the KGB missed one crucial detail. Sukarno didn't care if people knew he fucked a lot. In fact, he loved it. When the Russians later confronted him with a film of the spy-fueled orgy, Sukarno surprised the agents by being overjoyed. He even asked for extra copies. Now we hard cut over to the CIA, who had just blown a million bucks unsuccessfully trying to sway the Indonesian elections. So already a million big ones in the hole, they decided to make their own sex tape starring Sukarno. Well, kind of. A substantial effort was made to come up with a pornographic film, or at least some stills from pornographic films that could pass for Sukarno and his Russian girlfriend. So the CIA went to the Los Angeles chief of police who supplied them with every pornographic film they'd ever confiscated. The CIA scoured hundreds of hours of pornography. Bus. 
you gotta put me on this case. And despite watching hundreds of hours of X-rated content, they had trouble finding a couple who could pass for Sugarno, a bald, short Indonesian man, and a super hot, tall, blonde Russian spy. So the CIA, seeing no other plan, gave up. Just kidding, they decided to produce the film themselves. However, the CIA was having trouble even finding an actor who could stand in for Sukarno. So the geniuses at the CIA decided to make a quote, full face mask of the Indonesian leader. The mask would then be sent to Los Angeles where the police were to pay a porno film actor to wear it during the big scene. Now, by all accounts, a film was produced. However, it was never distributed, perhaps because the CIA came face to face with the realities of adult film distribution in the days before the internet. Real to real film simply did not make sense as an effective tool for delivering propaganda to the masses, meaning the average Indonesian family didn't have a film projector in their home, something they should have thought about before all of this. But ultimately, none of this mattered. The CIA, with their buddies, the James Bonds from across the pond, MI6, eventually facilitated a coup that led to Sukarno's government being replaced by the pro-Western dictatorship of Suharto, whose quote, new order led to the mass murder of thousands of real or suspected communists. Great. This isn't Fortnite funnies. What What is the mission statement of the CIA even? Oh, well, actually, on their YouTube channel, they defined it. Our mission is straightforward but critical. Leverage the power of information to keep our nation safe. This whole Sukarno situation, does that sound like what they just laid out? Because it doesn't to me. But the CIA has always had it out for those dirty commies, especially their Moby Dick, Fidel Castro. They came up with all sorts of stupid fucking plans to try to eliminate Castro, including Operation Exploding Seashell, which wasn't very cleverly named, where the CIA attempted to plant pretty seashells filled with explosives near where Castro liked to snorkel. Or how about when they contaminated a wetsuit with a skin-eating fungus but couldn't ever actually figure out how to get him to put it on. Or even a ridiculous plot to attempt to drug him to where he would lose his beard hair, supposedly a source of his power. However, my personal favorite is when the CIA tried to fake the second coming of Jesus Christ. Totally one of their most buckwild operations to date, the idea was that since Cubans are deeply religious people, they would likely revolt if there was a divine sign against Castro's rule. The CIA even planned on shooting star shells from a submarine to divinely light up the sky, because just telling people that Christ was back would be seen as, quote, a bit silly. Now, of course, I could tell you about when the CIA tried to turn a cat into to a spy microphone. I was gonna go in depth on this one, but honestly, it's just a story of the CIA like mutilating a cat over the course of a year, and it's a real bummer. So instead of that, here's just a video of a kitten sucking on a little bottle. See, isn't this better? This is much better. But it's worth noting that if you're upset about the CIA torturing a cat, good, we all should be. But we should also be upset that they're torturing, like, human beings all over the world, man. This one's not as verifiable, but you could take, for instance, the time the CIA allegedly drugged an entire village with LSD. The Pont Saint Esprit mass poisoning took place in a sleepy southern French town, when on a warm summer day in 1951, more than 250 people were driven mad. 50 of them had to be sent to mental asylums, while 7 people died from hurling themselves from windows and balconies. Now, a majority of academic sources accept ergot poisoning as the cause of the epidemic. The 2009 book A Terrible Mistake claims that special operations divisions of the CIA tested the use of LSD on the population of Pont St. Esprit, all as part of its MK Naomi biological warfare program in a field test called Project Span. A historian Stephen Kaplan called this theory harebrained and clinically incoherent, noting that LSD does not cause the digestive ailments reported by the townspeople, and typically takes effect for just a few hours, where the poisoning lasted six hours or more. Stephen Kaplan might be the greatest guy to talk about this, because not only was he a history professor at Cornell, but he's also a bread expert, apparently, who's been, like, interviewed on Conan about bread. Making bread is pretty much like a sexual act. It involves 
Oh my god! It, it, it. However, as supporters of this theory claim, it is certainly possible that the LSD the CIA used on the population could have been mixed with other agents to mask the source and make it harder to track back to them. If that sounds crazy and totally something devoid of reality, remember that verifiably they did try to turn a cat into a fucking spy satellite, so like, maybe. And they had no problem dosing unaware people with LSD in San Francisco. For example, the CIA set up several brothels dosing men with LSD and watching the effects of the drug through a one-way mirror. These sessions were also filmed for later review and study. Cool. Great. Normal. So now we're back to what I talked about in the intro, Operation Devil Eyes, the Osama Bin Laden action figure that would melt away to reveal a demonic face. You see, the military had a program in the Middle East in 2005 to foster goodwill by handing out backpacks with school supplies and toys. I mean, after bombing them to shit for half a decade, it was literally the least we could have done. Now, since posting a $25 million bounty for Bin Laden still didn't bring the CIA any closer to finding the Al-Qaeda leader, the CIA took a different approach. They reached out to Donald Levine, a legend of the toy industry and former head of Hasbro, which you might know from the My Little Pony toys, Transformers toys, Power Rangers toys, and of course, G.I. Joe, Levine's most proud project. Levine helped the CIA manufacture the Bin Laden toys with his connection to toy factories in China, and they felt they had the perfect cover with already running the backpack program. But imagine these kids playing with these toys, only to become scared of them once the face melts away. I mean, that's why they made them, right? To scare kids out of liking Bin Laden. Pretty fucked up to do this whole mission just to try to scare a bunch of kids. Hey, you know what's probably scarier to these kids? The fucking bombing raids. So when the heat sensitive material dissipates and the child is left with a doll designed to make them terrified, uh, Bin Laden gets uh, captured? And, uh, I don't know. I don't see the end game in this plan. I mean, a lot of CIA plans are like this. You can tell from this whole video, they put so much work into this initial idea and then it just kind of falls apart in the third act. While it appears that Operation Devil Eyes petered out due to a change in management at HQ and Langley, some of the factories claim that they produced as many as a few hundred of the doll. However, officially only three of the toys were ever actually made, two being found years later by Levine's son and auctioned off, while the last one remains at CIA headquarters under lock and key. What I'm trying to get at with all the examples in this video is that with a lack of oversight anything is possible, and this video just goes to show that with without anyone watching them, they'll do any depraved, stupid, brutal, idiotic thing they can think of. Sometimes it's funny, like the ones I highlighted, but most of the time, it's just violent. However, the propaganda on their YouTube channel would have you believe they're just a bunch of hardworking, good-hearted folks. We are analysts, graphic designers, operations officers, engineers, librarians, computer scientists, accountants, doctors, and linguists. You know what? I'm gonna help out the CIA here and make a more accurate video for free. Here you go, guys. This one's on me. We leverage intelligence, war crimes, and global lies to keep our country secure. We are torturers. We are fascists. We are complicit in horrible acts. We are creatively striving for new ways to harm our enemies, including the American people. I am ready to intoxicate people with my effort, my brilliance, and a liquid form of LSD. So if you'd love to slaughter communists, torture animals, and work in a predominantly white male boomer workplace, then please consider joining the CIA. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you could hit the subscribe button, that would actually really, really help me. Uh, like and comment on the video too if you enjoyed it. And if you really, really, really fucked with me, I have a Patreon account. So if you want to throw me a couple bucks, your support on there would be greatly appreciated. And now I'm actually going to thank my current Patreon patrons. Ryan Morgan, Callie Kessler, Griff McConnell, Nick Lewis, Brian Zapbaby, Pantsless Lizard, Avery H., William Nelson, Johnny Lasagna, John Mapley, Diego C.W., Diana Nock, Christopher Kunst, Brenna Folger, Hilary O'Neill, Isaac Marin, Marty Schindler, Jake Clark, and Kevin Krebs, who helped me with the Inspectothopter song. Thanks, Kevin. Again, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out. Thanks for watching.